energy to mass, it nice. starts getting agitated. As it moves faster and faster, the temperature rises. That's the definition of temperature, the motion of the molecule. You see as it moves faster and faster, it's getting so hot, they're moving so fast right now, they're emitting light particles that we can see. And as it gets hotter and hotter, the wavelengths of the light particles actually get shorter and shorter. So it's going to go from, it goes from red hot to orange hot, and now it's going into white hot. Right about here, it's ideal to stick this in somebody's pants. <laughs> and then as you slowly take the heat off? Just take the heat off and you watch it cool down, right? So what's thermal energy? How's it producing? How do we calculate it? Well, let's go find out. I own this too. This is a drafting room. It's another subsidiary of Bob Industries. So, how does thermal energy work? You saw something get heated up. But how do you calculate that thermal energy that it's absorbing? You can see the temperature rise, but temperature's not the whole story. Because when you absorb energy, if you're a molecule or an atom, it doesn't all get absorbed in a way that you can measure with a temperature measuring device. Let me explain that. Here's an atom. Okay? Now let's say it's argon. But it's a single atom. And when I add energy to this, I can add energy basically to make it move. It'll move in this direction, this direction, and this direction. And all that shows up as temperature. If I'm a thermometer, a glass thermometer, then what's going to happen is these atoms will have more energy and they'll smack into me. And when they smack into me, they're going to cause the glass to vibrate. And that means I'm transferring that temperature energy, translational energy, into into vibrational energy in the glass. And so now it's got that energy of motion. And that's going to translate it to the alcohol or the mercury inside the glass thermometer. And when it does that, it's, they're going to have more motion. And as they do that, that means their temperature is rising. They're going to push away from each other because they've got more motion. And they're going to push away and push away and they're going to expand. And as the temperature goes up, that's why the mercury or the alcohol inside the thermometer expands. Shows the temperature change. But not all thermal energy that goes into a system shows up as temperature. Say I've got, uh, let's see, in this room there's oxygen and nitrogen. And the oxygen and nitrogen uh, are, are called, they're in a diatomic form. And that they come together, uh, they should come in pairs. It's called O2, for example, or N2. So now I've got two atoms, and they're bonded together in a molecule. Now, you can't see it, but in between, there's a bond. When I add energy to this thing, it's not going to just go this way, or this way, or this way. It's going to rotate, right? If you hit something that's got length, it'll spin too. And so these guys will spin when I hit them. They'll spin this way, and they'll spin this way. Now, that doesn't show up as temperature. So the rotation of a molecule it won't show up as temperature. I put energy in, some of it will go this way, this way, that'll show up as temperature. This rotation won't. Also, there's a bond between these molecules, right? You can imagine there's a stick in between them, but it's an electromagnetic bond. And that bond, as I put more energy in, that bond gets more energetic, more energetic. It's storing some of that energy. Uh, that doesn't show up as temperature. So there are two ways that I can store energy in, these, in this molecule that will not show up as temperature. That's why we have to have a measure of how much of uh, the energy goes into changing the temperature. It's called the specific heat. Another example is, let's say, uh, let's say these guys are hydrogen now, and I've got an oxygen. I've got two hydrogens and an oxygen like that. That's water. So now water's got, it's got two bonds, really. It's got this oxygen-hydrogen bond, this oxygen-hydrogen bond. There's a little interaction between these two hydrogens. All right. Now it can rotate in three different directions, not just two, because it's, uh, it's got more, it's more than just a linear molecule. 
and it's got more vibrational modes, plus if it's in liquid form. It's got something else going for it. Now water, water is neutral, but it's neutral overall. The oxygen side is actually a little negative. Hydrogen side's a little positive. Overall, it's, it's neutral, but this is like Velcro. Okay, this is why, this is why water is one of the reasons water is so cool. Um, you know, when you wash something down, you can use detergent, but you can also just wash something down with water and it loosens the bond because stuff sticks to water because it's got these positive and negative ends. In liquid water, it lines up like this, right? Because opposites attract. So the negative hydrogen side will link up to the positive oxygen. Uh, excuse me, the negative oxygen side will link up to the positive hydrogen side and they'll stick together pretty well. That's a tight bond too. When I add energy to liquid water, some of it goes into the bond between the molecules. So this all goes into that thing called specific heat. How much energy do I have to put in to raise like a gram of the material one Celsius degree? Not all of it is going to show up as temperature. You saw the temperature of the metal rise. Metal's uh, much simpler than water, and so it doesn't take as much energy to raise the temperature of a certain amount of metal as it does to raise water. So here are the components of thermal energy. Thermal energy is given by H for heat. Uh, heat energy is kind of redundant because that's all heat is thermal energy, and the energy absorbed or emitted by a material, let's say I've got a container of water here, the energy absorbed or emitted by material is given by this. The thermal energy is proportional to the mass because each of the particles is absorbing energy and all of it has to raise that temperature, right? So the more particles you have, the more energy it's got to absorb to raise the temperature.